Hello friends, welcome to Rajesh Data Engineering. In this video, I am going to talk about different methods of defining schema in Databricks development. Schema definition is one of the basic operation performed in Databricks development. In Spark or Databricks, mostly we are dealing with big data. So we are reading the data from different big data file formats such as Parquet, Avro, CSV. So in order to create data frame out of the big data file, we have to define the schema. There are different options available to define the schema within Databricks using PySpark. I am going to explain those different options in this video. Let's get started with the demo. I have logged into my Databricks environment and my cluster is up and running. In the first step, in the first method of defining schema, the first step is we have to import certain methods from PySpark library that is pyspark.sql.types. Struct type, struct field, these concepts are already explained by me in one of the previous video. In case you haven't watched, I highly recommend to watch, watch that video. And whatever the data type we have to use for our data, those data type should also be imported imported in this step. I have also posted a video about the difference between struct type and map type. In case you haven't watched, you can watch that as well to get more information about schema definition. Right. So in the first method, I am going to tell how to define the schema. This is more standard method and this is recommended for any projects. And in today's real time project, most of the projects, this method is followed. So in the first method, we are going to define the schema using the methods struct type and struct field. So let us assume this is our data which is given in the list and I'm going, I'm going to define the schema. So for that, first we need to give a variable. Here I'm giving schema one, but actually we can give any variable name. Coming to the schema definition, it starts with a struct type. Struct type means we are defining the structure of one particular complete record. So in this example, I have a data which is having first name, middle name, last name, ID, gender and salary. This is the structure of one particular record. So I have to define for that particular record using struct type. So within this particular record, I am having multiple elements or multiple attributes. Those uh, columns should be defined using struct field. So here we are having six columns. So I have I used uh, struct field six times. For struct field, we need to pass three parameters. The first one is the name of the column. So this is the first uh, name. That is the name of the column that I'm giving. And what kind of data it is going to hold. So it's a string. That's the reason I'm giving string type, which was imported from the library. And the third uh, parameter is null type. It can accept null value or not. False means this first name, it cannot accept null value. Here we can see the first name is containing value. Even for the middle name, we are having some null value. Even for last name, we are having some null value, but not for the first name. Because here we have clearly defined the first name cannot accept null value. In the same way, we are defining all other fields and our schema is ready. Now in order to create the data frame, we can use the function spark.createDataFrame within that for the data in the place of data, we have to give our data. This is data one and uh, schema. We need to give our user defined schema. In this case, I have given a variable name of schema that I'm giving, but uh, the data, this place and this schema, these are the keywords we should give as it is. I hope you understood. Let me execute so that you can see the output. The execution is completed. Now we can see the output. And in the same first method of defining schema, I'm going to show you different examples. In the second example, I'm going to explain how to create nested fields. In this uh, data frame, we are having three fields, first name, middle name, and last name. But in the real time scenario, sometimes we used to have nested fields. Like, you know, we used to have name that might be the column name. Within that, we will have uh, sub fields like first name, middle name, and last name. So how to define nested fields? that I'm going to show in my next example. So in order to define nested fields, we have to use a struct type in the nested way. So here I'm defining another schema that is a struct, uh, struct uh, structure schema. It starts with the struct type, which is defining the entire 
record that is uh, the entire record within that i am having one field that is name which is having three internal values so which uh, that uh, name field here struct field within that i am defining struct type once again that struct type this is defining those inner fields again using struct field first name middle name last name of string data type i hope you understood how to define nested schema using struct field and struct type let me execute the execution is completed we can see the output here we are having only one column name which is having three internal fields or inner fields that is first name middle name last name this is how we can define nested fields and in the next example i am going to show how to define schema of array type and map type array type is nothing but in case you know we are having one column which can accept list of values let's say hobbies and it can have multiple uh, values music read uh, listening music reading books playing chess you know, these are the different list of values so we have to put all this list of values into one column that is called array type this is equivalent of python list and the second data type is map type that is uh, used to hold key value pairs that is equivalent of python dictionary so for that we have to use map type so in order to define array type the syntax is we have to give array type within that that array here i am having array values music reading chess so what is the data type of each element that is a string data type that's the reason we need to give data type within array type and coming to map type it is holding key value pairs for example salary that is a key the corresponding value is 3000 and another um, uh, pair is department that is a key and value is hr so basically we have to define the data type of key and also value so here we are having list of uh, uh, dictionaries and um, which is having a string data type if you look at the second uh, list uh, second uh, dictionary which is having string type of uh, key and also string type of value that's the reason i am giving string data type for both key value pair so this is how we can define array type and map type in our schema definition i hope you understood let me execute here we can see we are having hobbies it is having list of values and coming to properties it's um, it's nothing but key value pair and the first example we have already seen above it is uh, inner or nested fields i hope you understood and so far i have explained the schema definition and creating data frame using manually supplied data but in real time mostly we will be reading a big data file and we need to supply the schema for that so for that let us assume uh, i am having data one of the file that is manufacturers.csv which is having data of manufacturer and country for this uh, data i have to define the schema how i can do so for that once again i am defining the schema i am starting with variable my schema this is one of the simple data set just for this demo i am using simple data set it's having only two fields one is manufacturer another one is country now i have defined the schema in order to create the data frame we have to use spark reader within that i am using format i have already posted one video how to create data frame out of csv file in case you haven't watched you can watch i can give the link in the description box the important thing to note here is schema we have to define the option schema for that uh, schema we have to give the parameter of the schema variable that we have defined so let me execute so that we can see the output Here we can see it's uh, giving the output manufacturer and country based on the schema that we have defined. Right, this is the first method of defining schema. So far, I have co I have covered only one method of uh, schema definition, but with different examples. Now I am going to explain the second method of defining schema. In the second method, I am going to show you how to define schema, inline schema, which means here. I am not going to use any library methods like struct type or struct field. Simply, I am going to give uh, the schema. Here, I am giving the variable. Within that, I am giving a column name along with data type. 
So I am not defining nullable property and also I am not using struct type or struct field. Directly I am giving the column name and I am giving the data type. Now I can use the same schema for my Spark reader. Here I am using the same schema. This is another uh, method of creating the schema. But I highly recommend to go with uh, the first method. But uh, I am showing you different ways of defining schemas here. So let me execute so that we can see how this uh, schema works. Execution is completed. Here we can see the output. So it has uh, uh, created the same output as above. But uh, you know, we have defined the schema in different way here. Right. Now I am going to show you the third method of, third method of defining the schema. The third method, let's say we are having data in one of the list. Now I have to define the schema for that. I am defining the schema within another list. Here I am just giving only the column names. Even I am not defining the data type or nullable property. Simply I am giving the name of the column. Here we are having four values. Name of the employee, gender, salary and years of experience. So simply I am giving the column names but without data type. And I am creating the data frame using spark.createDataFrame. This is also acceptable. This is another method of defining the schema. Here we are not uh, defining the data type. Then what happens? Spark will infer the schema automatically based on the input data for each column. Let me execute this step. We can see the output. Here we can see I have executed. Here we can see even though we haven't uh, defined uh, the nullable property or data type, still the execution is successful. It has created the data frame based on the column names we have given. This is the third method. And let me show the next method. That is the last method I'm going to show. Here, I'm going to create the data frame and I'm going to define the schema on the fly. I'm not defining the schema uh, explicitly in any of the variable instead of that. I'm giving spark.create uh, spark data frame within that. I'm giving one list that is holding the data and another list that is holding the schema. Here directly I'm giving the column name along with data. So this is another method. Let me execute this step. Yeah, the execution is uh, completed. This is also working. So these are basically different methods of defining schema. I hope you understood. Even though there are different methods, I, uh, I strongly recommend to use the first method. Right. Now you, we understood different methods of creating data frame. Now I am going to show few functions which are related to schema, which we frequently use related to schema operation. The first one is print schema. In order to see the schema of a particular data frame, we can use. This is one of the commonly used function. For example, this is our data frame. This is containing four uh, columns. We want to see the list of columns along with its data type and also nullable property. Then we can use print schema. Let me execute and we can see the output. Here we can see the first column that is car name. Second one is MGP. We can see the data type also string and long. But while defining the schema, we haven't defined the data type. But still it has produced data type. How? Because based on the input data, data of each column, the data type will be inferred automatically by Spark engine. So the first field that is holding string value, that's the reason it is a string. Coming to the next field, it is holding long data type, long values, that's the reason it is long. And also it is giving nullable property. Right, moving to the next function, df.schema. In case we want to get the schema of a data frame into one of the variable, then we can use. This is uh, used in real time scenario because sometimes you know, we used to uh, get the schema of one data frame. Based on that uh, schema, we will uh, create another data frame by reading one of the big data file. So this is also another commonly used uh, function related to schema definition. So let me execute this step. Here we can see this is how we used to define manually any schema, struct type and struct field. It is giving in the same way. Right. The last method I am going to show you is schema.json. So basically, if you have to get the schema output in the form of JSON, then we can go with df.schema.json, which means the output of df.schema that will be bundled within JSON. These are the commonly used functions along with schema definition. 
I hope you understood the different ways of creating schema in Databricks development. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like the content of this video, please like and comment in the channel. Also, don't forget to subscribe this channel and click on the bell button to get the latest video on Databricks development. Thank you.